I went from being a mobile photographer to having a large studio and I made that, that jump. Um, I was never able to work from home because I got toddlers and a dog and I thought that would just be far too chaotic for my lifestyle. However, I know lots of you have got home studios or are thinking of starting a home studio. Um, and I think that's great. So some tips for you there is where possible, just remember that when a client walks into your home, it can still be homely. And I'm not saying neutralize and erase your family life from it because when you have a home studio, that can be part of your marketing and the way you sell it and advertise it to people. But remember they're gonna come into your house, so keep it clean, keep it neat, keep it tidy. Have things tucked away that you don't want them to see. Um, remember people judge you from the state of your bathroom. Horrible as that is, so if you've got toothpaste smeared around the sink, it's not going to look great for your clients. If you can manage a separate bathroom, washroom, I definitely recommend that. But if not, just remember, cupboard doors have everything shut and clean your surfaces. Um, and another thing that I really like with a home studio is you can have all the amenities there that they might need. And I do this in my business commercial studio as well. But in the bathroom, I have spare maternity products that they might have forgotten that they might need. I have. Um, breast pads for any nursing mums who've forgotten to bring them. I have nappies and wipes and toddler seats and potties. Anything that makes time easy for them when they've come out of the house, maybe in a hurry and forgotten to bring things with them. So just having all the little extras there will make their time much more comfortable and smooth if there's anything they've forgotten to bring with them. For those of you who are mobile photographers, um, my top tip is do not tip up at somebody's house with carrier bags full of props and camera gear and backdrops. Make the effort to look professional. So go to IKEA or B&Q and buy some either, um, I had a wheelie black suitcase I used to take, or take some nice boxes with lids so you look smart and presentable. I even went to a slight extreme which you might laugh at, but I felt that I was charging a higher premium for my products. And yet at the time when I started, I had um, a little Renault Clio that was a bit battered. So I used to park it out of sight and then walk around to the client's house without my banged up car being outside their house. It's a small thing, but if I'm wanting this client to think that they're buying into a really successful, famous kind of in the area photographer, I don't want to let it down by them seeing the other side to me. So it's all about how you present yourself. So you can still go high end into someone's house, but dress accordingly, take your things with you, and then um, and make it as easy as you can. So the other tip when you're running a mobile business is plan your workflow. So when I used to go to a client's house, I used to have the vinyl backdrops and they'd all be rolled up in the car in a tube. And when I get to the client's house, even though you've carefully rolled them, they'd be kind of a bit curved and creased. So I learned to lay that out first on my backdrop stand and then I used to work on a beanbag. So I'd have my beanbag on the floor and do my beanbag shots first. And that meant by the time I'd finished working with the baby on the beanbag, the backdrop had hung all neat and smooth for me, which made a difference too. Um, so there's a few things to hopefully make it easier for those of you who are mobile.